let's just be honest. We've got to talk about the protests and the violence that broke out in Louisville last night following yesterday's news about Breonna Taylor, which was so disappointing to many of us. And I know many of you wrote us in, wrote me in. Two police officers were shot at the protest that broke out in the city. One suspect has been arrested and charged. Oh, God, that's so hard to hear. That's not easy to hear. The officers are expected to be okay. I just want to talk about the protests and the violence. Lindsay, how do you feel about seeing all of that? Of course, I don't condone violence. I have family members that are police officers. I do think that people took to the streets and are angry because of bad policing, bad policy, no repercussions. And so when the anger gets to a boiling point, you tell people of color or anybody who is there to support people of color that you're not going to do anything for a woman who lost her life when she was doing absolutely nothing but sleeping. I think people are very angry. Yeah. Like I said, I don't support violence, but I understand why people are so mad. And yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Well, no, I just, uh, you know, I look at motivational quotes and I follow a lot of motivational quotes on uh, online. I, and I know a lot of people think that's cheesy, but I saw one this morning from Gandhi that I thought was very fitting to what we're going through right now in America. And it's a, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. blind. And it never sounded more fitting just because of everything we're going through. And people are just like, you know what? I'll just let the quote speak for itself. Yeah, it's a it's an amazing quote, and I understand that. But let's get to the outrage that Lindsay was talking about. So many of us, including you, were outraged yesterday by uh, the news about Breonna Taylor, including many celebrities. Oprah Winfrey posted this supporting Breonna Taylor's mother, saying, my heart goes out to Tamika Palmer, who has to be reminded again and again that her baby won't be coming through that door. Viola Davis did not hold back, tweeting, bull bleep decision, Black Lives Matter cannot be said enough times. Kerry Washington tweeted today's verdict is not accountability and not close to justice. Well, let's talk about the other side. Even though it's uncomfortable, that's what we do here at DBL. Many are actually praising the Kentucky Attorney General for the indictment. So here's what President Trump said about it yesterday. Well, I thought it was a uh, really brilliant uh, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron is doing a fantastic job. I think he's a star. He's handling it very well. In response to that, before we get to our discussion, I just want to show you Benjamin Crump, the lawyer for several different uh, civil rights and police brutality cases. He was on the morning shows this morning. Let's take a look at what his response. We think it's just outrageous. It's offensive. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what evidence did Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron present to that grand jury. Her family, as do I, think these proceedings were a sham proceeding that did not give Breonna Taylor a voice. So, Lindsay, I saw a tweet, too, that says, you charge an officer because the bullets went through a neighbor's wall, but not because they went into a black body. What do you have to say about that? Right, so a neighbor's wall received more justice than a black woman. I mean, it took six six months or more to come up with this conclusion, and I just think Breonna Taylor deserved much better. I mean, magazines, people, activists all stood up to say, let's get some justice for this woman, and nothing happened. Her name wasn't even mentioned in the indictment. And so it's just a disgusting abuse of power and, and misuse of power when you're in these positions and not doing anything for this woman. And I think that this is a big sign to everybody that you need to get out there and use your voice and vote these people in, like Daniel Cameron and other people, because I think that to drop the ball like this and say that a woman is going to get no justice when she was killed while sleeping and her neighbor's wall will receive more, more is the Disgusting. Yeah, I, it's it's odd to me that a black woman, Jeff, or a black anyone, anyone is dead, and there is no way the law can say that anyone's accountable for it. That's something's wrong there with the system. Now, I'm not saying it's easy to prove in court. I think court of public opinion is different than the court when we talk about justice. Right. What do you think? Well, first of all, I just want to go back to the way we even presented this story. Right? We're talking about Kerry Washington, Oprah Winfrey. Those are high-profile people who I look up to as well. Right? And then on the other side, we have Donald Trump. Right. That's not presenting a good argument, okay? And I feel like even you if you're in the middle, no, absolutely not. And I feel like even if you're middle and you want to have a conversation about it, now I'm taking Trump's side instead mm. of Oprah's side. I don't like the way we set that up, and I think a lot of people might feel the same way. I think we need to put the facts on the table and let them speak for themselves, right? We go to you, you're, I'm not putting you down here, you're not a lawyer, but we go to you for our lawyers and our political things and things like that. The facts of this case, I wonder, if they're being diminished by the movement mm -hmm. of Breonna Taylor and what it stands for. 
because the police did have a warrant. And I'm not taking sides here, and I understand how this is going to come off, and I have to put that into text because I know how it comes off. But the police had a warrant, right? And, get, and if I'm wrong on any of this, please correct me, stop me, you too, Lindsay. The police had a warrant. They knocked. Kenneth Walker heard the knock, but didn't hear the announcement of, of the police. police. Right. Kenneth, not, Kenneth admitted to shooting police first in retaliation. Right. So the police returned the fire back, right? right. So they both were, they're both claiming self-defense. Right. Both sides are claiming self-defense. But the police, in this case, were, had a job to do, right? So I don't understand how how the attorney general is supposed to come to the conclusion that this was murder if the facts are that they fired first and they returned the fire and they were supposed to be there in the first right. place. So I'm missing something. Okay, I'm not I trying to educate myself as much as I can, but I'm missing something in the complete blindness of the whole thing. I think it comes down, and Lindsay, I'll let you speak, of course, about this too, but first of all, it's the grand jury. No judge has made a decision on anything. And what the grand jury <laughs> has to decide right now is, did they announce themselves loud enough? And in the training, it says you have to say police three times for the streets to hear you. Now, 12 people in that building said they never heard police, police, police. And therefore, Kenneth Walker was in his right to shoot because there's stand your ground law And in I Kentucky. agree with that, but do you right. understand, Tori, how deep I had to go yes. and how many podcasts I had to listen to and how many articles I had to go through on the internet and how many times I had to switch back and forth on TV to get to the facts that I just presented to you. So it's a because lot of no one's talking about the facts of this case. I'm not saying one person's right. I'm not saying the police are responsible. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to present the facts in the middle without coming across like he's taking Trump's side or he's not on Oprah's side. I'm trying to present the facts to you like that. And you're right. And I want to hear more facts. Right. I want to have that discussion. I'm just, I have to go and find my own facts, which I encourage other people to do and kind of make my own opinion and now I'm putting it on a table why the attorney general kind of came to that conclusion and that's what we're trying to do here at DBL Lindsay what's your response to sort of the confusion around the case what Jeff's speaking about I don't think there's any confusion I think the police went to our house based on a false pretense so they were at our house and killed a woman based on their mistake I think the city admitted fault by paying 12 million dollars and saying we're gonna pay you right. out because we obviously know something is wrong I think the city understands something is wrong by putting Breonna Taylor's law in place mm -hmm. saying that no knock warrants will no longer be a thing so I think the city is well aware that they did something wrong and everybody's well aware and when they try to confuse us with all these nitty-gritty details about no a woman's dead she's mm -hmm. dead OK, and the police killed her and she did nothing wrong. And so if there's no justice for that, then I don't understand what is happening in our system and how we're being protected at all. And I, Lindsay, I completely 100 percent agree with you that there is some weird things going on because it took so long for this case to even to get one indictment. Right. Correct. But my my point is, if you're doing a job in the police's case here and you're told to go to that home and enforce this warrant, not knowing that the city may have messed up, and you're shot upon, how, how do you expect those police officers to react to that situation? And the police are, you're saying they're doing their job, but they're going to her home to try to look for an ex-boyfriend that was already arrested. And so that's the problem with police in the first place, mm -hmm. by going to her, her home and harassing this black woman because you're scared of black people and you think that they have some alignment with some illegal activity based on the color of their skin. Breonna Taylor, again, did nothing. So that's what I mean about, like, all the layers of policing that's gone wrong and why people are taking to the streets and why people are upset. Like, all the other details after the fact that she was killed when the police wrongfully went to her home, is annoying to me and, and, and wrong. But I don't want to talk about that because that is not the thing. If it was your family member, Jeff, or any of my family members, I know that I will be the same way, outraged out there fighting for my daughter or my sister or anybody in my family. And I think that everybody needs to continue fighting for her because she was killed for no reason. And, and I agree with you. I'm just... I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's it's a it's a fascinating, it's a good discussion. It's an open. It's what people are talking about in their homes. I'm glad we're talking about it. A lot of you writing in saying yes, Linz. Some people saying Cameron can rot for all I care. So there's a lot of high emotions. What's frustrating most to me legally is now the no knock warrant is deemed illegal and it should have been in the first place. That's what's so. But frustrating. should we should we blame the people who signed that warrant and put that warrant into place? No one's talking about those people. And not only we're, we're, not we're only the warrant, it was it was wrongfully these... authorized. So that is. So what 
Why are we talking well, that's about a, wait, who no, signed so those? That's, what I want. that's the whole thing. Like, if we if we bring the whole entire police department down, and Erica Cobb has said this on other shows, like, that is the problem. So there were no knock warrants were put in place. Some people are saying in CNN reports because of speculation that they want to gentrify the area, meaning they want to bring more non-color pe people of color in that area. So then they get people, black people out by doing things like that, killing them, removing them, making them uncomfortable, and then different people move in. And so therefore, if his layers of who approved this no-knock warrant, we would bring down the entire Louisville, Kentucky department that looks over the entire city, and nobody wants to do that. Mm. You understand when you're playing games of power, you watch the show House of Cards. Yes, that's a scripted series, but nobody wants to bring down the house in that way. Mm. And so that would be the problem if we keep going after these. This is why we need people like Ben Crump and all of them to continue to push forward, because there's a deeper issue here. But I think that's what needs to be done. And I'm glad right? we had that conversation. I think it's about dismantling power structures of oppression. Great conversation, Lindsay and Jeff. Stick around. Coming up on DBL, caught on camera meltdowns.